death, impermanence, attachment. What's next for the Death Dhamma podcast? Or have we exhausted all of our discussions around what it takes to live the Dhamma and to have an awareness of death and work towards a release from suffering and also have a good death? Ha! That's a trick question. We are not finished yet. Hi, it's Margaret Maloney, and welcome to Season 3 of the Death Dhamma Podcast. I'm so glad you're here, and I'm so appreciative that you are part of my community. And yet, I seek not to be attached to the idea of the podcast, or even to the idea of our community. And that's our topic this season, attachment, clinging, and aversion. What happens when we really want something? What happens when we really don't want something? And what does it do to our suffering and dissatisfaction? Let's dive in and find out a little bit more with today's episode. The clue to the mystery of season four of the Death Dhamma podcast is in the phrase release from suffering. We are working on our own release from suffering, but what about others? How do we balance taking care of ourselves versus helping others with their release from suffering? In season one of the Death Dhamma podcast, we spoke to 12 wise teachers and they shared with us their experiences with death and grief, how they first learned about death and what has helped them to process the loss of their loved ones. In season two, we considered impermanence and we spoke to more wise individuals who shared with us their stories of impermanence and how impermanence has shown up in their lives and how sometimes impermanence where it seemed difficult at the time led to a more fulfilling life later. So we definitely, we handled impermanence. And now in season three, we've been all about attachment, specifically clinging, craving, and aversion. And We have been gifted with some wonderful people, you know, continuing the theme of having some wonderful wise teachers to talk to us about what it means to have attachment and also what it doesn't mean. For example, it doesn't mean that we can't love and have relationships with other people unless you're a monk or nun. And it doesn't mean that it's bad or that we should be detached. It means you know, for us to be aware, because yes, it is the root of suffering. And that root of suffering can come from wanting things, pushing things away, having views about ourselves, wanting to be involved in certain rituals and ways of doing things, not wanting to be thought of in a certain way. So we've had some really interesting stories, I believe, in my humble opinion, stories and teachings from other people. And then we've uh, partnered that with teachings from the Pali Canon and some contemplation. And I was open and honest in sharing with some journaling and thoughts about aha moments and how some of this has landed with me. So there we are now, here we are. And you know, when it comes to clinging and craving and aversion, planning for season four has brought me some new lessons. I want to keep creating the podcast. That involves some element of clinging because it's, you know, I'm clinging on, I'm hanging on. I want to keep doing this podcast, but if it's time to let something go, it's time to let something go. I have some attachment to thinking that I have to be the one who comes up with the ideas that I all by myself must be the one who comes up with the idea for the podcast. So there's some clinging to a idea of myself and who I am and who I want to be for sure. And so often, because I am used to working somewhat independently, I have some aversion to asking others for help. We might also see this as a type of clinging again, back to, you know, my view of, of myself. I, I have to be the one it's me. What is me? And who is this me who needs to do this thing when there are people out there willing to help me? And if I asked it's going to be a better result because it's not going to be something that's existing just in my head, but it's going to be something that comes from others, which means it's probably going to be more useful to others now, isn't it? So there it is. Even after our season three discussions and teachings and journaling, here I am, a human in this world, 
navigating my way of clinging, craving, and aversion, seeking a release from suffering. It did occur to me that I did not have to figure this out by myself. Yay, right? And so in a previous episode, I did ask for input. And the other day at lunch with some friends, I explained my dilemma, mentioning, you know, what has already been covered in previous seasons, because my friends may or may not be listening to the podcast, right? It's not a requirement for friendship. Uh, And, you know, discussing wanting to continue, but having uncertainty about where to go next and has the topic exhausted itself? Is it time? Is it time to let it go? And someone said to me, I would like to learn about Buddhist nonprofits and Buddhist healing practitioners. And after some discussion that turned into, you know, how can we help others with their release from suffering? And if this season has been about attachment, the root of our suffering with an eye from overcoming it to obtain a release from suffering, then how about focusing on others and how we can help others obtain a release from suffering, or at least work to ease that suffering. And how does that fit into the lives of these people who dedicate their time to helping others? And how does this show up in their practice? And what does that mean for you and I? How can we help? And how do we balance helping others with our own work? Unsurprisingly, there are different views. The view of the Bodhisattva path where you sacrifice to alleviate the suffering of others, or the view that your own practice and your own release from suffering comes first. And I am likely presenting those two as if they are opposing and extremes, and that's not exactly correct. Well, at this moment, I am reminded, though, of a teacher has told me more than once that you cannot give what you do not have. I do know that at a minimum, we must do no harm to others, And that while on your path, you can help others and that compassion toward ourselves and other sentient beings is a critical part of our practice. Turns out we do have some things to discuss. All right. So what's next? Right now we have one interview left for season three. If things go as planned, we're going to have this one more discussion with a guest who's going to share with us about attachment in her life and possibly how she has dealt with it as she has lost some of her loved ones. After that, there's going to be one season three wrap-up. Then hiatus. You know, the Death Dama podcast goes on hiatus each fall. But there'll be special episodes that come out each month. So October, November, December, there should be one special episode each month. And then back with season four in January. So please feel free to send me your requests, suggestions, and perhaps names of individuals you would like to hear from as we delve into how we can help others with their release from suffering. I would love to hear from you, your thoughts, your suggestions, your own stories about attachment. So follow this link. I'm going to read it to you in a minute here to leave me a 90 second message with your ideas and suggestions. You can go to HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash www.speakpipe.com forward slash death underscore Dhamma underscore podcast. I suppose you could also just use your favorite search engine to say speak pipe death Dhamma podcast. And there you can record an audio message for me and be sure to come over to margaretmaloney.com. That's M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com and join the community. You've been listening to the Death Dhamma Podcast with your host, Margaret Maloney. Thank you so much for being here. Come find me on margaretmaloney.com, M-A-R-G-A-R-E-T-M-E-L-O-N-I.com. And until we meet again, may you be well, may you be happy, May you be at ease and may you be free from suffering. Bye for now.